Hello everyone and welcome back to Astroneer. I know it has been a little bit of time since I last posted a YouTube video and this is the beginning of a brand new series. This is a series that I've wanted to put out for quite a while um, but because I've been so busy with classes and everything um, I haven't really been able to do so. And this is going to be a build along. So rather than making something on stream and then pulling up a YouTube video that's going to kind of condense it all together and tell you all how it works we're gonna go through the actual construction and operation on stream. So maybe you guys, while I'm kind of explaining some of the logic behind it, might be able to follow along and build it yourself as, and maybe see if you guys can get it going as well. So this is gonna be a calculator. Initially, we're just gonna start with addition um, and then we'll add in subtraction. And if I can figure out a good way to do it, we'll do multiplication um, and division, probably not, but maybe we'll do some bit shifting, which is a little technical, but we can explain what that does later. Now. Even though this is going to be building along with everyone so that you guys can all see how it goes, I have just prepared this setup very quickly. Um, so I have our first input right here. Then we have our operator. We have our second input equals, and then we have two inputs right here. And there's a specific reason why we need to do the two inputs there. Um, that'll be covered in later sections. This first one is just going to be for some initial setup and then kind of covering maybe just one quick basic thing that we're going to do. Now, I did forget to give some of these guys some power beforehand, so let's just toss on a platform and an RTG. Granted, you can really use any power you want. This shouldn't be too self -ex this shouldn't be too difficult. Um, this is in creative, so ooh, that's kind of blinding right now. Um, this is in creative, so it should be pretty easy to do. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, to kind of get this at least initial setup going. Now, one thing that I will recommend is the enter key is the duplicate key. Um, I tend to have it on caps lock just so it's a little bit easier for me to hit with my hand on the right side of the keyboard. Um, if you're on controller or a different system, it might be a little bit different for you anyways. I also like to have a floodlight uh, resource Plinth, backpack, printer Plinth in my backpack, um, just because I use a lot of these guys to set up initially, but once I have done so, I can pretty much get rid of the Plinth, and that's not too much of a worry. Um, so the first thing that we're going to be starting to do is we're going to be setting up buttons that can trigger the numbers accordingly. Now, in the past, what I would do is I would literally attach buttons to your cable pins to each individual floodlight. And we're probably gonna end up doing something similar to that today. Because while the advantage of these uh, large storage boards is that you can store you can store floodlights or work lights in a pretty simple pattern in such a way that can be very easily seen as a number. And sorry, I'm losing where the buttons are. There we are. Um, the, the only problem with these guys is you can only attach a singular cable pin to the back. So say I wanted to have multiple things triggering that back little right corner, I can't do it. I can only trigger the whole board, but I can't trigger this one. So rather than having X amount of these buttons for every single one and then figuring out which ones we wanna do, we'll do it in a little bit of the old school method that I have constantly done in the past. Now this calculator is going to be a three bit inputs. And the reason that we're doing three bit is so we can index from zero to seven, zero to seven, and this will go from zero to 15. So that's, only, that's why we only have a single bit digit here, single digit here, and then a double digit here. Now, you can easily do four bits, but that's just gonna increase the complexity of wiring and stuff like that. So just to make it simple, I'm going to opt not to do so for the moment. And what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be setting up enough buttons to basically trigger all of these floodlights based on what number I want. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is gonna be zero through nine. This one is going to be zero, one, but then negative. And there's a reason that we need to do that that way. Now what this is gonna do is this is going to allow us to press a button just once and have us display the appropriate number. So starting with the easy one, this is gonna be for negative. Now you can't place this pin on something and then split it. So make sure you split it first right next to it and then you can place it right on. So I'm for all these, I'm just gonna place it on the top of the floodlight. Um, I know it's probably not gonna look the prettiest, but just for just for sake of making sure that it's gonna be a little bit orderly, that's what we're gonna do. And now this is an example of a case that we're preparing for now, but it's not gonna be a part of the initial, uh, initial operation. When we press this button, that's going to, that's gonna turn on the negative sign. 
And that's for, uh, for if we go into the negatives when we're doing subtraction. Now, of course, that's not gonna happen when we do uh, addition right now, but that's just something that we're preparing for in the long run. So now what we're gonna do is this one is going to be for zero. So whenever we do a single digit number, this is what's going to end up being displayed. It will be a zero. Um, and in the event that we do need an extra button for this, because we very well might need an extra button, uh, because the zero is going to have a lot of segments that it will need to cover, um, we can always just split it out to another button and it will remain instantaneous and it's not going to be an issue. So as you can see, we're just basically displaying zero right now. Uh, and that was actually our last segment. Actually, uh, Oh no, we have one left. So because of that, I'm just gonna snag another button real fast. And this button, I'm just going to use the last segment to reset it on this button, just so that we can make sure that we have enough segments. Otherwise we, we wouldn't have enough for a zero and that would not look right. So now that we have all that set up, whenever we trigger this button, it will trigger basically the top half of the zero. It will also trigger this button. And then that will ultimately trigger all of the digits or all of the floodlights that we need, work lights, excuse me. I'm gonna keep doing that um, to make a zero. And that's it that's essentially going to be the premise here. So this first video, it's not going to be covering anything too complex. So if you think you can do this yourself, by all means, skip to the next video. Uh, hopefully it will be out by now. Um, but I will try to, I will try to get this series out as quickly as I can, just because I know that they're all going to be tied together and stuff like that. And as I said, now I have a little bit more time and just to double check one is now working. So that's the premise of what we're going to be doing, uh, initially at least. So we are, have wired up our first digit of our two digit output. Now we're gonna have to do zero through nine on this board. And I'm not actually gonna show it for this board or this board. These two boards are gonna be th zero through seven. So if, if after this video is done and you're not quite sure, just basically repeat the behavior that we're gonna do here on zero up to seven, don't really do eight, eight or nine, because if we do a three bit input, because we have three binary bits, it's not gonna actually give us enough data to write more. Oh, I did that wrong. I need to break it off first. Um, it's not actually gonna give you enough bits to store a larger number. So don't do extra work than you need to. And again, we're keeping this a little bit simpler, doing only three bits, again, for the single digit inputs. Um, if you did want to go a little bit more complex, I implore you to do so. See if you can add more bits and it's gonna make wiring a lot more complicated because you now need to account for extra space and extra possibilities and stuff like that. So it will be a little bit more complex, but it is certainly doable. This is more of a proof of concept and to kind of give you guys an idea of a, of a project that you can do yourself, hopefully, and still surprise or wow a couple people if you, if you decide to follow through with it. So again, that's our zero, should be pretty above and standard. Everyone should be expecting that by now. Uh, this one will be for one. Um, the nice thing is some of these are a lot easier to wire than others. Um, this does take up a very significant portion of the time um, just because you need to make sure that you place all the pins appropriately and whatnot. So this, this is going to be a standard. Expect to have to wire a lot of things. Um, there's no way around it this is going to be the easiest way for us to actually produce our working calculator. As I said earlier, you could have wired buttons to each of these individual floodlights and then triggered them otherwise. That would work totally fine, except you would have to make sure you trigger the appropriate buttons. You would have to make sure you trigger the appropriate stages and do it at the right time. So it can get a little bit messy. Um, so breaking it out like this and making sure that you have a, a rememberable order for your buttons um, that we're breaking these digits out into is going to be very, very smart. And actually, one of the other helpful tips is I noticed that I didn't have a line going to here. So I needed to make sure I had a line going there because otherwise that would be a missing digit. And granted, that's not much of a, that's not much of a difficult thing to do, um, especially because when we test it, we're just going to flick the button and see that it comes up appropriately. So this is gonna be two. That is not gonna be two. We forgot to do the side digits. That's what we need to do there. And then that's gotta go there. And now this is gonna be a two. Perfect, we have our two all set. And then the other one is gonna be a three. There we go. So the reason that this is gonna be a little bit different from the original calculator that I made is because I originally did these all of this without switches. 
So I did this with essentially auto arms dissipating one unit of power as opposed to a switch allowing power through or not. So it was a lot more complicated and I had to do a lot more math for it specifically because sometimes I needed to supplement the power to get over a one unit threshold. Um, but ultimately the main premise is that I, was bro I broke all these guys out. And in doing so, um, I actually used a counter instead of kind of like an input. And that just changed the way that I had to do the buttons and stuff like that. So if you are familiar with that design at all, it will look a little bit different. Um, so just keep that in mind. But hopefully, again, this is not too boring and maybe you guys are able to follow along pretty well for this. I, I don't feel like, I don't think this first series is, or first episode, I guess, if you want to call it an episode, is going to be the most challenging. Because again, it's just going to be wiring things to make sure things look right. Um, when we actually start getting to the next stage, that's when we're going to start doing a little bit of math. And it's not quite math that you might originally have expected because we're doing a calculator. You might say, yeah, obviously there's going to be math involved. This type of math is, yes, addition, but it's going to be with binary numbers. Now, binary numbers addition works pretty much the exact same way, but the only thing you need to really worry about is because you only have zeros or ones, you need to do some creative stuff with the carry in order to make sure that everything comes out the way it should. And now I see, I, I wasn't sure if I wired this one or not, but I did see a cable go in here, so I can make sure that I just wired these two on the lower section. And then that should be six for us. Yep, there we go. And all we have is seven, eight, and nine. Heh, seven, eight, nine. That was the best joke. I'm losing my mind while I'm wiring. That's that's the tough part about this. Whenever whenever I've had to be on stream and, and do wiring, um, I've always rambled, essentially. I've always rambled about topics, and hopefully most of this has been relatively important, relatively along the lines of what we're gonna be doing. Um, ooh, that was not correct. Okay, so somewhere along this button, we ended up missing a button. And we ended up placing a pin on the overall uh, display board. And I think what that, what that causes us to do is when we turn on all the buttons, it it will cause all the other ones to go off. So if we were to flip this right now, that would be off. So I think it actually might have been, might have been this one right up here. Um, so we just got to trace that one back. What if we, what if we press this button right now? Yep, that was it. That's exactly what it was. So sometimes you can get little errors like that. And naturally, if you wanted to, you could just pop all the cable pins right back and start this guy back over. Um, but Oh, it's still happening. That's a little bit interesting. This is all part of the debugging process, because that works. We're clicking, we're, we're selecting the floodlight. Yeah, there we go. Interesting. Hopefully you guys saw that it actually was connected to the floodlight, um, and it wasn't in a very other weird position for some reason, but I don't know. Sometimes stuff like that happens. It is Astroneer. It's not meant to do computations in game aside from the computations that the game does naturally. So yeah, sometimes funny things can happen. And actually I want to just verify that this is, no, that's not working right. Okay. So this is something that I've also noticed can happen. Um, it's that you can actually technically stretch these cable pins further than they're intended to go. For example, this is the maximum range that the cable pin can attach to. It can't technically reach that work light. It's just a little bit short. You can see it right there. However, if we click on the work light, the pin still hops to that position. It still hops to where we click, except now it triggers the entire board. So to get around this, I'm actually just gonna move these guys a little bit closer. Um, I'm just gonna move them right over here rather than having to wire them a little bit in like an extra roundabout way. Um, so I'm just gonna move them again, a little bit closer. You can probably condense these guys if you really wanted to, but this is just gonna make our operation a little bit easier. It's making it so that they can now reach. That way we can wire them all on top without worrying about some of them maybe not connecting to the floodlight or the, yeah, the floodlight itself, 
and actually secretly connecting to the board. So that might have actually been what we were experiencing with the with the top left of the seven. Um, it might have been stretching it just a little bit past where its cable could connect to. And because of that, it was actually causing the entire board to trigger. And so here we ran out of cable pins here. I knew this beforehand because I've made eight before. So I'm going to just continue wiring on this second uh, button that we have um, without any delay, which is quite nice. These buttons without a delay makes it everything happen. And there we go, there's eight. And I'm also just realizing that rather than wiring to each of the pins here, we could have just wired to the backboard itself. Yeah, that would have been faster. Oh well, we have it and it works. No harm in changing it now. Um, oops, if you need to wire an eight and you have it all set up in this configuration, I guess you don't actually need to wire every floodlight individually, but for the sake of redundancy, for the sake of practice, you know, it doesn't really hurt. I've done this many times before, so I know that I can uh, can do this relatively speedily, but uh, ultimately, if you haven't done it, it might not be bad just to, just to kind of get used to the process. And there we go, there's our nine. So that's kind of all I had intended to do for this initial first video. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the project that we were gonna be doing, um, about using the three bits as a calculator, starting with addition and then moving through some other operations as we can build out space. Um, for now, uh, this is all that we have covered. We have only covered how to display a few things and this should be pretty simple. Again, if, if you're looking for something a little bit more complex, more binary based, that will come out in the next video very shortly. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully this has been pretty easy to follow. Um, this series right here, so zero through nine, is not gonna be the same as these two. So I'm not gonna show it on video just because it's gonna be a little bit redundant and a little bit repetitive. But these two uh, display boards need to go zero through seven because that's gonna be limited by the input. And that'll all make sense when we actually get there. Uh, but for now, Hopefully this was relatively simple to follow along with. I'm excited to see if you guys are are on board with the ability to make a calculator in Ashtonir. I've I'm very excited about it, and I hope that you guys can share the same experience that I do. Um, especially because this is not something that everyone will will be able to uh, it will be able to do themselves. And hopefully being able to explain it as I go through it personally, rather than just showing you the end result. Uh, hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier and hopefully it'll also be very interesting and cool for you as well. So until then, uh, hopefully you guys have a good rest of your day, evening, night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing, and we'll see you in the next video.